afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the OCG show. It's August the 14th, and you're joined by me. My name's Abe Foster. I'm also joined by... Awkward silence. Uh, <laughs> about, about, about. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Michael Langdon. Awesome. And we've got um, got some quite, quite a lot of good chat for you guys today. We've got some hot, hot topics, hot potatoes, uh, politically and otherwise, that we're going to chat about. And um, and just some news as well. So we'll jump straight into the into the first thing. Um, no Man's Sky uh, came out this this week or, or the week just just passed. Um, interesting game, but we'll get onto that in a bit. So I, I was I was riding the hype. I couldn't help myself towards the uh, you know towards the release date for this. I started riding the hype and getting a bit obsessed with it as I do with certain games. Um, ended up uh, going down to to purchase it um, on day one because I just thought, shit, I got it. I, I love being part of hype sometimes. It's it's, it's just fun in general. Um, so I, I went down to my local uh, mall, um, which has the warehouse and JB Hi-Fi and various other places like that. Now, the warehouse had it for $94. JB had it for $95. So you can guarantee that I went to the big red shed. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I went there after work, so I was getting quarter to six probably in the evening or something like that. Completely sold out. Now, I, in all my years of gaming, I have never encountered a store in New Zealand that is sold out of a, of a video game, ever, in my life. This, mm-hmm. this was, I, I didn't really know how to process this information. <laughs> I, I, I just sort of, he told me it's all sold out, and, and, and I was just like, well, what, like, and then I just <laughs> left <laughs> I just left the store and I, and I just didn't know what to do. And I just went home and just kind of sulked. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, considering GTA five, which is probably the biggest release in the world. So thus far in gaming that didn't sell out. So how the bloody hell did no man's sky sell out? That that's what I'm wondering. I'm thinking. Um, and I think it's the same reason that the only other game that I'm aware of selling out in New Zealand, at least in recent years um, was when destiny first came out as well. Um, before yes. everyone knew it was contentless shit. Um, <laughs> that there are two kind of common ties between uh, no, no Man's Sky and Destiny, which separate it from GTA V as well, which might explain it, which is A, the hype. Destiny before No Man's Sky, I think, was the most hyped new IP um, in a long time, which meant that people didn't know what it was going to be like, so everyone just rushed out to buy it day one. Mm-hmm. Whereas GTA V, it's the next in a line of GTA, so nobody's kind of in, you know, that necessary immediate rush to run out day one before everything is spoiled about the game for them, because it's, it's GTA, right. they already mm-hmm. kind of know what it's going to be. Um, right, so it's the new IP factor, you think? Yeah, I think, and I think B is also tied to the new IP factor, but just stock, stock management for retail stores. They might be like, well, Grand Theft Auto always sells incredibly well, so we need to get X amount in store. Whereas with a new IP, they might be like, well, we have no idea how well this is going to sell, so we'll start with a smaller stock and see how it goes, and then when we reorder, maybe get more if we need it. Um, right. So I think the biggest factor is just it's a new IP. So A, it's all a buzz, and, and consumers are like, I must get this now before someone ruins what it's about for me. Um, and B, retailers maybe don't want to take that risk of getting the same amount they would for an already established high-selling franchise because they don't actually know how it's going to sell. Right, right. I mean, I, I went into it, I did end up buying it from, from JB um, the following day just because I wanted it and it was there. And they had a reasonable amount of copies. They, they didn't, it wasn't anything, um, you know, GTA where it had like a full-on wall of the games or anything like that, but they did have a, a decent amount of copies. So I think maybe day one they had a few and then they were like, oh, shit. And then they, they got some shipped up from another part of the country or something like that to, to contend. Because, I mean, I'm in Auckland, which is concentrated population, which is probably another factor, to be honest. I didn't think yeah. about that mm. um, in terms of, you know, just way more people to, to, to take these copies and things like that. But did you guys did you guys pick up the game as well? or? I actually um, got it on the PlayStation Store. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just um, had it all preloaded and ready to go at, it at midnight. Uh, nice, uh, nice. So you're you're right on there at at twelve oh one. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> and yeah, just just got to jump straight in. So yeah, um, it worked out for me, I suppose. So. <laughs> nice one, man. I I mean, I to be honest, if, uh, I didn't even think about buying it on the PlayStation Store. I'm just not up with the technology enough yet to have that be <laughs> part of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like my physical copies. 
I didn't even think about the fact that I could just go home and buy it from my own house. Yeah. Like that's that's just not something that entered my brain. So I'm going to have to sort mm. of rewire that in the next uh, next year or two. Yeah. Um, but Balthazar, did you pick it up at all? Uh, I have it on PC. Ooh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> because we needed the point of difference, really. Yes. Um, yes, we did. Yeah. My PC is a beast compared to PS4, and of course, when it came out initially, nobody knew what it was going to be like yeah. on PC. <laughs> um, well, well, we'll, we'll just we'll, we might as well get into discussing the game then, um, instead of sort of beating around the bush then. So, I mean. Should we start with the PC version, or, or do you guys want to want to roll with the the PS4 version? And, and I think we just sort of... talk about the game as a game, yeah. and then towards yeah. the end get into the well, nitty gritty of the system yeah. that's played well, on. How, how do you how do you guys find it with the hype? Because you know, I, personally, I was I was a bit hyped for the game. I was trying not to be. Yeah. But, um, I never bought into the hype. Yeah. Um, because yeah. I did with Scam. Destiny yeah. and got <laughs> fucked royally. Um, so I, yeah, I didn't buy into the hype at all. Um, and I'm glad I didn't because mm. if I had, I would have been let down. But because mm. I didn't let myself get hyped up, it's just cruisy. Mm. Like it's just yeah. Like yeah. seeing what's there and just yeah. riding it a bit. Yeah. 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 That's, that's interesting because I, I haven't seen um, as a motive audience for a game possibly ever like the, the crap. The insane stuff that was getting chucked on the internet due to this game, you know, lawsuits and death threats and things like that. Yeah. This this game just awoke something in people, something ugly, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I'm per personally, um, you know, I, I think I, I was, I, yeah, couldn't help but get a bit hyped for it. Um, but I think, and and it was, um, I did have a brief moment of disappointment, which um, I think for me, I was. Um, expecting to really like the first planet I was on and I was going to like explore it fully mm. and find everything. Um, but I actually got put on a bit of a shithole. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, and then I think uh, with going to the second planet and I was just like, Oh, right. This is another shithole as well. Um, <laughs> I don't like See, there, there's another, there's another weird <coughs> point of contention there because people, people, uh, you know, how those early copies got leaked and people were streaming it and so forth. Um, the impressions came out from those people and they were saying, that every planet they found was really nice and lush, and they hated that because they wanted that feeling of excitement wow. when you go through ten shitholes and find one good one. Um, <laughs> and people good. were getting angry the fact there was too many good planets. So well, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I'd say potentially the opposite because there's nothing that feels quite that this game has the ability to bring out complete, you know, yeah. disdain from time to time mm. when you're sitting there mm. and. You know, you're, you're doing your autopilot jump into the atmosphere and you're watching the clock count down. You're like, all right, I'm sitting here for a minute and a half. And then you get there and it's a barren wasteland of nothing. And you're like, well, <laughs> fuck, why? That, what? <laughs> that was literally a yeah. minute and a half. I had yeah. to sit there and make the jump and there's nothing yeah. worthwhile here. Yeah. Well, uh, that, I, I, at the same time, that's one of the things I quite like about it is that yeah, I was going to say the same yeah. thing. Like, yeah, we get we get put in different places and we have different experiences, and then you know we can mm. instead of you know like we all play the same the same game the same way and have the same same experiences. You know, we're, we're on different planets, we're having different challenges and trying to. Yeah, I, mm. I think the water cooler chat is really a, a big part of what's what's really sort of incentivized me to to play this game. Yeah. I just love talking with people and hearing what they found and the stories that came along with it. I love the, the fact that this game is sort of encouraging storytelling, um, organic storytelling, you know, mm -hmm. from from people's experiences. That's not something you see really often with a with a with a video game experience kind of thing. Yeah, and it, it's a story that people tell themselves rather than the game telling. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Which, like for me, it, it's something I quite like. Um, yeah, for a sort of narrative. Um, you know, perspective, I suppose. Um, yeah, so, I mean, shall we... Do you guys want to touch on your first planets and sort of give, give a rundown of, of the first sort of impressions you got of your first planets and things like that? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could do, yeah. <laughs> do, you want, so, do you want to start or...? Yeah, I can start, yeah. yeah. So I when I when I touched down, uh, you know, on, on my first planet, it was night time, um, and everything was kind of purpley. It was like a purple sky and stuff like that. <coughs> it was a pretty mild temperature. I was, I was, you know, thinking it was going to be negative 300 or, or you know, 300 degrees Celsius kind of thing. Um, but I think it was, it was about 14 degrees. I was like, oh, this is relatively pre pleasant. Um, and then I just sort of ran around gathering resources and eventually went into a cave system. And that's where I found my first creature, which was a 
bouncing mushroom um, that was squeaking at me and <laughs> a honking, a tiger that was like honking at me. And I was, I was just, I was just over the mood at that point. I was like, oh my God, what is this game? Um, and then, of course, I ran around gathering resources and filling up my inventory and trying to trying to understand that inventory management is, is a big part of this game. Um, but yeah, then I sort of, I, I think, Mike, you, you tried to document all the creatures on your first planet, right? And, mm-hmm. um, and I, I sort of just, I wanted to take off as soon as possible kind of thing. Like I, I felt like I'd seen everything on my planet. There was some weird sort of bulbous um, plants and things around, and that was quite cool. But looking out on the horizon, everything looked pretty much the same. And I suppose that should have been an omen for, for, for things to come. Mm. Um, but then I, I just sort of took off into the atmosphere and find my, found my next planet, named my first planet, Aberdeen, um, after the <laughs> shithole in Scotland. <laughs> and, um, eventually found another planet, which was uh, quite a lot better um but still not you know not the best thing i would ever seen in the world but yeah that, that was my first experience what about you guys um I, my first planet um yeah as i said it wasn't that great i think um compared to a couple of other ones i've been to um but yeah, it was uh, kind of like a brick gray sort of color like everywhere um had some acid rain it did have some uh <laughs> The, the the first creature I found was like a giant like red dog thing, um, which I just called Space Dog. Space Dog. <laughs> oh, Clifford would <laughs> be. I'm not gonna name anything. So. Um, yeah, I basically collected the resources and spent a while um, like exploring as well um, before jumping into space. Um, but uh, prob- probably the best uh, planet I've I've been to so far is um, there, there's a, a quite a large planet which had a moon. Um, right. So I, I called them the the planet planet McPlanet. Oh, sorry, Planety McPlanet face. <laughs> in, uh, of course, yeah. The moon, uh, Moony McMoon face. So, so when you look at the moon, it says Moony McMoon face, moon of Planety McPlanet face. <laughs> 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 and the text uh, just goes right off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it manages to fit. Um, but yeah, the moon is um, like was quite interesting. Like lots of um, interesting different creatures. There was there was one. It was kind of like a big sort of T-Rex kind of thing um, that had these like really weird, creepy, like outstretched arms that, that, that its fingers were like real spindly. It reminded me of salad fingers. Oh, salad fingers. Yeah. God. And then, and then its head was kind of like an acorn um, and it had like spider eyes and this like weird, like curly horn thing that looked like a cow lick. Um, <laughs> just, yeah. It's sort of like Charlie Brown, the dinosaur with yeah. salad fingers. So, I've got this great screenshot because you can um, you can feed the, the animals and then they'll they'll get like a smiley face above their heads. Right. So I got this great screenshot of it like looking up at it and it's just this really creepy looking like child <laughs> Melissa type monster uh, with a smiley <laughs> face above its head, <laughs> like, just like looking directly up at it. Yeah, it's oh, cool. that's amazing. <laughs> what about you, Balthazar? What was your what was your first planet like? So my first planet was a uh, generic spore planet alpha um <laughs> as i like to call it because it was so if anyone's play, <laughs> if anyone has played spore it's that uh you know orange ground with green trees and purple water that like 90 percent of the planets in spore had um right and so 1980s color palette yeah yeah so immediately i was just like this will not do i've got to leave um so i was just getting to grips with the controls and everything doing a bit of uh bit of gathering and a bit of figuring out how to repair tools after just shooting at nothing with the laser um and yeah took off as soon as possible uh there were some creatures on it of course that i discovered before i left um i'm just trying to think what the first ones were they were kind of Kind of hard to describe. They they looked a like they defied gravity, not in the way that they floated, or I guess they defied physics because they were ridiculously front heavy, but they only had two legs located at the very back, um, <laughs> and the front managed to just be completely horizontal. It was quite a long creature, but with no front legs, um, so it was really bizarre that way. Um, and it had little arms on the front, which weren't so much arms because they didn't have elbows. They were like lower arms with hands on the end and like almost blades on the lower arms kind of 
going up the back and they look like they would be seriously threatening um, and shooting them with the laser and aggroing them they I mean I don't know what typical creature damage is yet in this game um, but it took me down half health and one kind of mm. one smack um, so I quickly fed Still- it some iron um, <laughs> got it to like me and then uh, yeah and then took off <laughs> interesting so yeah, I guess slightly different from your guys because my first thing was like, I'm going to see what happens when I do aggro everything around <laughs> me and, and try to kill it. Um, I couldn't work out if it had a health bar or anything. I was just shooting it for a bit and then it smacked me and I was like, oh God, I'm about to die already. <laughs> so I just started feeding it rocks. and yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yeah, anything um, else like interesting happening? Like, you know, space, once we get into space? I have not uh, yet. I mean, I, my I'm probably I'm drastically different from you guys so far in experience, time, and just that I'm still in single digits in terms of hours, whereas mm. you guys are probably well into double digits by now. Mm. Um, so I've actually not had the fortune of finding anything in space yet um, mm. to check out. Yeah. No ships, no space stations, nothing like that. It's just mm. been exploring the planets in the nearby vicinity of my my starting one yeah um but i'm looking forward to getting into one because i hate my ship already because the storage space is way too small yeah (laughs) Yeah, well yeah that's that's one thing that that really pisses me off is the inventory space is just insanely tiny eh? like Mm -hmm. that must have been a design decision right i think so Mm, yeah yeah um probably make you sort of care and, and prioritize in your inventory yeah so you have to be quite careful about you know what you pick up and make those decisions about what you want to keep and yeah if you can sacrifice a, a slot for an upgrade an inventory slot for an upgrade mm. uh, yeah that, that was an interesting choice as well to make upgrades in your ship and your suit and your tool mm. all take up actual blocks in the inventory mm, mm. i guess it's because it's it should be seen less as an inventory and just more as space you have mm. to store things in right so an upgrade is gonna take up space if you're putting something else on your ship that's less space in your ship now because something is taking up part of that space so i guess it's just looking more at, especially with your ship storage it's just like well how much internal space do you have to put mm. shit in so if you put an upgrade in there that's now less space inside your ship to put other mm. stuff in right right uh, that, that kind of makes sense i mean I've, I've upgraded my ship once i mean i bought a new ship because you can't upgrade your ship as far as i know um, so I bought one new ship, which had like two more slots and cost about 200 K. Um, and, and I mean that I have noticed a difference in the, in the sort of feeling of the amount of stuff I, I can mine, but at the same, at the same time, it's like $200,000 for two more slots. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty steep. Like it, yeah, it's, it's pretty unforgiving sort of game. It doesn't really hold your hand um, very much. And, you know, I always like that sort of thing. Um, but there is you know that there is flaws in those in those um choices as well sort of thing so i mean well, things that i like about the game will go over before we we start delving into the things that we didn't really <laughs> enjoy that much <laughs> um i really like the language learning stuff where you find all the words and you can yeah, yeah. Um, understand more of what's being said by the traders when you once you you know use these knowledge stones and gain these words and things like that i find that a really really cool idea um, just because I feel thoughts? like I'm solving a riddle or something when I when they come up to me and they ask me and they you know it's like blah 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 gek blah 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 um, oxide or something and it'll be like give them ten carbon give them ten oxide give them ten I'll be like I know what that is <laughs> and I'll yeah. give them ten oxide and then he'll give me some sweet piece of technology or something like I love that stuff. They often like have you found any that you actually can work out so far how you got the word from it. Because seeing things where it's like, you know, you read, you find some bit from the civilization, some, you know, stone plaque, and you read it, and then it's like, you now know the word for, but you read it, and it will be like, we, uh, our time on this planet was spent enslaving its local populace. You have learned the word for friend. I'm like, what? <laughs> How? What? Have you found out that actually anything you read seems to have any connection to the word you learn? Or Because I haven't. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't really paid attention that much to, the, to that sort of thing. I've just been reading the, the law, if, um, if you want to call it that kind of thing, and then just eventually I'll get a reward at the end. I'll be like, oh, okay, sweet. And then I just... I won't think anything of it kind of thing. I'll just put it in my word bank and uh, head on my merry way. But yeah, no, you're probably right, actually, <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, um, just space magic, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. I, I, I do like the, the really cool 
way in which these these encounters are written as if it's like a choose your own adventure book. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really cool. It's, it, um, I think it's it's going to appeal to you know people probably old enough to have like mm. read those those adventure books as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the the ones I used to read were the Goosebumps ones and things like that, and it it, it, um, it struck a chord with me just on, in that vein. And I mean, it also saves them on having to animate all these outrageous things that happen in the actual text. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, yeah. But I, I thought that was really cool. Like one that I came across was um, uh, there was a monolith or something like that, and it said that a bird or a little a little creature landed on top of it, a little winged creature landed on top of it, and it started screeching in pain, and its neck twisted around like the exorcist. And I was like, holy <laughs> fuck, that's pretty intense. Maybe they should have <laughs> all these things. That would be good. <laughs> that, that would be terrifying. <laughs> But yeah, I thought that was really cool. I mean, uh, any other little bits and pieces that you guys like that you that you picked up on, or yeah, I mean, I'm I'm enjoying those encounters as well. I just um, want to talk about like a couple where you just like I'm not sure if like um, they could put in a, a few more rules around the way these work. But I, I came across this guy um, who, well, yeah, an alien who um, one of the warrior race guys, and uh, he's he's watching a war about to unfold on his like tablet or whatever. And he's like, right. it's real gutter because he, he doesn't have enough fuel to get there. <laughs> so, um, and then and then you get the option to give him some plutonium so he can fuel the ship, because you know mm. plutonium's everywhere. And he's like, hey man, have some wine. That's, that's no big deal. And he's like, oh, thank you so much. Like, oh, now I can go join my friends in battle or something. Um, and then you, you you can see plutonium from his front door. You can you can probably even mine it from his front door as well. You can also, <laughs> <laughs> oh look, there's plutonium like right in your front yard. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is my, which is, um, yeah, so I mean, there's weird things like that, but you know, it's it's only being sort of nitpicky, which um, <laughs> things like and that. The, the characters are like, what, there's three races or three or four races, and they all just kind of have iPads and they're, and they're standing there pretty static. Yeah. Uh, they look at you like a little bit and stuff, but they're, for all intents and purposes, they're just scenery. Like, they, mm -hmm. they don't really do very much. You can have one interaction with them generally, and then that's the end of that. Mm, mm. Um, so I mean it's the fact that it's sold as a triple A is a massive massive mistake in, in, yeah. in my opinion like that if, if it wasn't sold as a triple A and it cost about 30 or 40 bucks New Zealand mm. people wouldn't be as as angry um, and as emotional as they are at the moment but and you know the, the lack of content and everything like that that could be more forgiven if you know it's an indie title and it comes out and you're like oh I mean this is really cool Mm. the indies usually have one thing that sets them apart and, and you're like this is really awesome and then the rest of the game might be lacking yeah. um and that's kind of what no man's sky has it has that amazing sense of discovery and wonder mm. and then everything else is kind of pretty middling or like there's not a lot to sink your teeth into kind of thing yeah so i think that was a big mistake and and maybe sony's involvement was more of a curse than a gift at this point mm -hmm. yeah it could be but I mean, um, at, at the same time, they're, they're, they said they're still updating it. They're going to add some cool new content. Like yeah. the latest patch said they're going to, um, was that you can own one of those big space freighters? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And base building base as building, well. Yeah, mm. yeah so that, but, that's, I mean, that's kind of exciting. I've never been a huge person yeah. into base building. and yeah. But yeah. that's that's cool for, for you know people who want to do that sort of thing. I think the original, it, he originally said they didn't put that in because they didn't want people to settle. Mm. They wanted people to explore because that's kind of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thesis of the game. Mm. Well, I'd, personally, what I would want to see is, um, you know, you, you're wandering around and you just find like, you know, one room buildings with one alien in them. Like, like, I'd, I'd want to see like a big city in it, but that's just, you know. Yeah, I would. Build, I would want to see. Into the hype got people pissed off about the game. So. Yeah, <laughs> I would want to see even if it's not integrated as as having a log and everything where you can keep track of them, and if they do it more as events than quests, some sort of system like a questing system where, for example, Mike, you had your story where you know there was this guy who wanted to go join the war but mm. needed fuel. I'm going to assume when you gave him fuel, he was still there. Yeah. He thanked you, but he was still yeah. there. I would love for him to then go get in his ship, and you can get in your ship and follow him and find out where this war is and get to the war and take part in the mm. war and shoot other ships down and stuff. Um, mm. Yeah, just for the events that you know you hear of happening in the galaxy to actually mm. be happening in the galaxy, mm. you to be able to find the coordinates, go there, check them out, and take part in these galactic events that could become part of you know the history of the No Man's Sky universe. Mm. Um, yeah, 
I, I, and I mean, that's that's a huge undertaking and not something I'd expect them to push out in, you know, a free patch, even if they did it as, you know, $20 DLC down the line. I just mm. think that's the thing that would get me into the game because mm, I would say mm. currently I'm not in the game. Like, yeah. it's very I, much a game when I'm playing it. You, you, I'm not, yeah. you know, suspending my... I'm not so invested that time just flies by. I'm consciously just looking at things being like, that's very video gamey. Like, that's a very classic yeah. game. Like, I never mm -hmm. lose myself in this game. But that's sort of right. thing where there's no longer those moments where I'm like, well, hang on, why can't I now go do this? Mm -hmm. If they just added a few of those things so I could go do them, like I could find out where this mm -hmm. war is mm -hmm. after helping this guy and go take part in it, that'd be enough for me to get yeah. immersed in it and, mm -hmm. and love it. Um, and right now, that's what's holding me back from it mm -hmm. is the fact that it is too much just exploration. Like, it would be great for it to have, you know, the emphasis on exploration, and key, keyly, that's what they want you to be doing. Mm. Um, but at this stage, it's like, that's that's all I can do. I can't mm. do anything else. You allude to all this other stuff happening in the galaxy, but I'm not allowed to go and do mm. any of it or take part mm. in any of it. Um, and that feels extremely restrictive for a game that's supposed to, you know, <coughs> make you feel like you're just completely free and able to mm. do what you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, that is, I feel like, is what the, is kind of lacking is, you know, the sort of feel that makes it seem like a, a genuine lived-in sort yeah. of universe, um, you know. Um, oh, I just lost my track. It's a, bit, it's a bit cold and clinical at the moment, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit kind of like you go into all the buildings and they do, they do you know, they, they have that, that space sheen um, and that's a very obvious design decision as well to make them, you know, very pristine looking and stuff like that. But it does feel like, they're just there and the characters are just plonked there and they're not, you know, interacting with one another. There's nothing about this character being in this certain place that makes them different from this character being this other place or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It could all be part of the plan, though. I mean, we have no idea what their continued support plans are for the game. Mm -hmm. It could be that that's exactly the plan at the moment. The galaxy mm -hmm. is new. It is in, like, a clinical condition because everything is pristine, untouched, undiscovered. Mm -hmm. And as the lifespan of the game goes on and people make repeat landings on planets, buildings get visited over and over, sites expand, some buildings, you know, start to become dilapidated, others start to build out and become towns and then cities. And, mm -hmm. you know, it may just be that's the state it's in at the moment because it is literally a new pristine galaxy that mm -hmm. hasn't been, you know, lived in yet. Mm -hmm. yep. that, that would be really cool if that was the case. And I really hope that is. Mm -hmm. Um, should we get into some of the problem? Or the, I suppose we already have. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, PC, what I'm talking about is uh, PC, PC problems. Yeah. PC problems, yeah. Uh, the fact that this was clearly a PS4 game, that they <laughs> just were like, oh, there'd probably be an audience for this on PC. Let's slap it up <laughs> without actually trying to optimize <laughs> the game in any way whatsoever <laughs> for a PC. But it seems... So I've, I've heard this called as bad as the Arkham Knight port. Would you say that's fair? Uh, it's playable, so I would say that's, you know, it's not, <laughs> look, Arkham Knight wasn't, like, they had to pull Arkham Knight off Steam because people couldn't progress, they hit points where they literally couldn't continue in the game because shit was just too broken, this isn't broken in any way, it's just not working as it should. So, right. you know, it'll just be things like there'll be constant frame drops when nothing has just happened on the screen to make you lose a frame. You know, there's mm. no new stuff entering. There's no, there seems to be no correlation between your graphics settings and performance. If I turn view distance and textures down, my frame rates drop. Mm. If I turn everything to max, it runs smoother than if I turn everything to minimum, mm. um, which is just ridiculous. Uh, because that was my first thought. I was like, well, I know my machine can run this. It's more powerful than my PS4, so why is it struggling? Let's drop some textures. And it started running even worse. And I was like, what? <laughs> what is happening? Um, I mean, there's no consistency to it. You know today, uh, during the week, you said that there were you know, some, some dropped frames and stuff when you were kind of boosting across a planet um, from yeah. in its atmosphere, and you could see you know, kind of those texture pop-ins not quite keeping pace with the speed you were moving it. And stuff like yep. that. Mm. But in PC, it's not even that. It's not like you can look at it and be like, oh, well, it's consistently when I do this one thing. It's just whenever it fucking feels like it with no no reason at all. It just it just doesn't perform on PC at all. Mm. Um, right. So the optimization is just not there at yeah, all. It's not there at all. Mm. Um, I, I have a question actually for PS4 version, so I'm wondering if it did the same thing. Um, what was the button mapping like for you guys on the controller? I don't think we get button map mapping. Ah, oh, so it's just set. So, what's yeah, yeah. sprint? 
so, yes. yeah, so that's, yes. that's a bit so of an I odd one. I immediately remapped that to L3 because <laughs> I was like, why the fuck is sprint on the look around and scan on yeah. the movement? Like, I'm, what is going on? I, I was actually enjoying it over there because, um, yeah. like, with, um, I think with the way I play, you know, like, hold the controller probably a bit tight. And so yeah. a lot of the time, well, I find sometimes anyway, when I'm trying to move forward, I'll accidentally <coughs> press. Yeah. Especially in, like, sort of um, games that can be a bit intense, not really mm. No Man's Sky, but, um, you know, Bloodborne. Yeah. You, know, you accidentally press, like, L3 or something when you're just trying to walk or... I can't even remember what L3 does on Bloodborne. Um, and so, you know, it sort of get that, but in, the, in No Man's Sky, it's, it's on the other stick, which is, you know... Like, I'm not so holding I'm trying to look, I yeah. can't look while I'm moving mm. if I'm sprinting because I'm clicking it in and it's then harder to move. Like it's easy yeah. to keep the left one clicked in while it's also pushed up, mm. which is what mm. you do when you're sprinting. I just mm. I found it a really odd yeah. choice. I immediately changed it. First yeah. thing I did, I went. Yeah, to I mean that, that's so I changed it. I've heard um, a few I places. I just wondered if that was like because on PC you're meant to play keyboard and mouse, so if you put mm. in a controller, it's like, well, here's your weird button mapping. But mm. no, if that's just what they've mm. chosen, that's really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've, I've kind of gotten used to it and I kind of like it at this point, mainly because there's a, like, um, uh, I don't know if you call it a glitch or whatever. Um, if you if you sprint and then you melee and then you jetpack, you can actually go really fast. So that's how I've been getting around. It's oh. sort of, it's like the, the old Halo BXR do, combination do kind of thing. Is the melee um, important part of that step? Because I've, I've just been uh, sprinting into a jetpack and... You know, you keep your... I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure the melee is because it, it sort of boosts you forward a, a tiny, a few frames kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure... Try, try it with the melee in there as well and yeah. tell me I, if, if you go further. I, to be honest, I've never even used the melee, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, like, no, I, I've... <laughs> I didn't realise didn't realize that one was melee. I thought it was just like pull your gun down from the top of the screen. Yeah. That's what he I guess he tries to, you know, pistol whip with the with the butt of the handle, but I, I always just thought he was just kind of swinging his arm and pulling his yeah. gun down. I had no idea that was no. <laughs> I think well, my complaint with the controls is um, that it probably, I think you guys wouldn't, wouldn't agree with me, is that X is the um, jetpack. I would probably actually put maybe R1 as the jetpack. Oh, yeah. Right. This is because sometimes I'm jetpacking and I want to look around. Look around, yeah. But, you know, with the camera being on the right stick, you, you can't... Sort of I like, don't have that issue with my control yeah. on PC. I mean, it's just a minor thing, yeah. Um, See, what, what you've got to do is you've got to put your thumb on X and then use your index finger, cross over your thumb and use your index finger to use the right stick to look around. Uh, or, have have long, the claw, the claw. Yeah. or have long <laughs> enough thumbs to keep the button held down with yeah. the, you know, yeah, exactly. empty bit in the middle and then <laughs> yeah. you've still got the top bit for the yeah. thumbs. <laughs> Hold your thumb horizontal over the stick so it goes from yeah. the stick and reaches out to the X button. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, sounds like an N64 controller now. Train my cat to hold down the X button when on command. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teamwork, yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there is, there is well, I mean, obviously glaring yeah. other issues. That The only frame rate things I've really encountered are when you are, as, I mentioned, as you mentioned, boosting across the planet. Um, and that's the pop-in kind of thing. But, I, I mean, I put that down to the tech. It's it's mm. the procedural tech. I'm not mm. sure we're going to get away from that too yeah. much. I'm not sure there's too much they're going to be able to do about that, really. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that fuzzy that fuzzy sort of fading in effect yeah. isn't great. Yeah, I mean, on, on crafted games, you can you can, you can can set what the, um, the, the distance stuff is going to look like, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. the building, you can, um, like, I think even um, a really good example I can remember is... Um, the original God of War is um, there's a point where you're running down a massive corridor, and uh, it's, it's real sly. But if you look closely, you can see it where all in the background um, it turns into a 2D oh, picture, yeah. um, and it, it's it's real it's a bit subtle, but it's really well done. So they can sort of set exactly what the background's going to look like. Yeah, um, I kind of yeah. But with this, you know, it's it's basically just an equation. So to get that sort of a good level of detail in the distance, you need a you know to process the, the full equation. Yeah, it needs to Whereas, be an extra option setting on PC, like yeah, equation distance. But, yeah, <laughs> I, but I think I think what they've they've done is just um, um, you know, uh, uh, doing the equation, but to uh, like not as fine detail, if mm. you see what I mean. So it's just like find instead of finding points, you know, one, two, three, four, find points one, five, 
10 and then sort of build something from yeah, the points of, as you get yeah just sort of approximate the points in between to build the distance yeah right right so it renders like a real basic looking yeah, version yeah. of and then as you get closer it renders better yeah which which can look odd when it pulls up some weird points and you know um you got you got like a spike here that turns into a, a like fully fleshed out tower of gold or something like that um mm. yeah so it does look odd with the pop-in but um you never know like they've they've brought in the uh, the qa team now um yeah, the the Sony QA team, which is apparently bigger than the entirety of Hollow Games. <laughs> yeah, so you know, hopefully they can do a lot of work in um, improving the way it works, and you know, um, put in some button button mapping and uh, okay. some some maybe camera options for um, PS4 as well. Change the field of view. Yeah, yeah, the batty. field of view. I mean, no, I'm not that. I'm not sort of down on that too much because yeah. I did hear the idea that it's like you're wearing a space helmet kind of thing. Yeah. So it's rest- and so now I just see yeah. it like that whenever I'm playing. Yeah. Um, I mean, which which isn't too bad. For me, um, it doesn't bother me too much. Um, the times it does bother me is when, you know, I'm just wandering along, um, minding my own business when like an animal attacks me out of nowhere. Mm. Right. Right. Not sure if you noticed, but they always run around behind you as well. So you're trying to turn around, <laughs> but I did, I'm not sure if it's the field of view, but like. You're turning at a decent, uh, you know, you a, a decent rate, it but it's always like slightly out of frame. It's yeah, always just like you can't like sort of turn enough to um to be able to like shoot it or like, I guess I should try melee. <laughs> so <it's just laughs> no, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I actually just remembered another creature I found that was really weird. Um, it was a dinosaur, but it had it looked like pyramid head from Silent Hill. So it had like that that shaped head, and I was just like, "Oh my god, PTSD from Silent Hill." <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite cool. But I've seen a couple I of mean, things that just have like their head is like basically like from the neck up is just a tentacle. It's like oh yes, um, I've seen that as well. The purple kind of tentacle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sort of like a grabby thing as well. What does it remind me of? I'm not Japanese really sure. porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite a, good, a few technical it's, things in there <laughs> that would remind me. Of that. Yeah. It's a you know, it's a game that I'm using at the moment to play in between other games, and I think yeah. that's probably the best way to play it as a sort of a nice wee break from something else, a, a, an ambient romp kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I thought, unfortunately, I think, that's not what people wanted. <laughs> yeah, well, I think you and me have like you know we've been listening to podcasts and like while we while we play the game. I'm not sure. Yeah, what, yeah. So, but, I have the I, I have the TV next to it on. Oh right, yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. TV. So it's kind of it's not. So. You know, you're you're playing the game, but you know, you're you're doing other things yeah. as well. You know, listening to. It, it doesn't have to be your like, primary sole focus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think it's a nice uh, some busy work. Like that's what I've really been enjoying a few games like that recently, and and this is like the perfect busy work game kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I wish the sound design wasn't so damn good, so I because <laughs> otherwise <laughs> I just plug into the headphones and I feel like I'm missing out on so much. I was actually going to challenge you on that, eh? Um, so really? You said that you were going to give it, you know, kind of your your best sci-fi soundtrack you've heard in a while and, and stuff like that. And I'm the exact opposite. I have to have other audio on when I'm playing it because I just found the soundtrack appalling. Like, really? Not one single part of it is appealing to me. Um, it. I mean, I don't know if it fucking randomly generates the music every time you touch down on a planet as well but i think and i just haven't heard any good ones yet but it's all just like weird friggin wailing and people scratching on metal containers it sounds horrible (laughs) it sounds horrible for me for me the music said it's best when um uh you know i'm fighting something you know like something or something and then it sort of gets a bit upbeat so then you get some drums in there something other than like scratching um, I mean, I'm yeah, like, when I'm just floating, drifting in space, yeah. it's all right because it's yeah. quite, you know, peaceful. Mm. But when I'm on a planet, I don't know, it yeah. sounds a bit. Yeah, well, a bit I, bad. I think they did do the music procedurally as well, mm. um, which is an interesting. So I'm just getting all those horrible clashes of, of sound waves yeah, that don't be. mix with each there, other. <laughs> a couple of times, maybe, maybe it could have been a creature, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing around me. But you just hear, like, what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what some weird like. I can't even describe it. I can't even remember what it was like. It was just bizarre. <laughs> it, it keeps happening, and every time it happens, I sort of stop and look around and just like, what? what is what's is something following me? Is this some like ominous? But um, 
Yeah, no, you found I mean, a planet of invisible creatures <laughs> yeah. around you. I mean, when I, when yes. I mentioned the soundtrack, um, I was listening to the actual soundtrack on Spotify. Ah. So what what they've done is they've, they've this band, sixty five days of static, um, have made a whole album for this, and then they've these songs sort of pop up every now and then. Like I hear little bits of it when I'm yeah. playing the game, kind of thing. But I listen to these this full album on Spotify, so. Maybe give that a listen and let me know what you think, because that's, yeah, yeah. that's the album, how it was meant to be heard kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, I did listen to um, the full thing on YouTube, um, like, I think it might have been last week, um, which is, yeah, it was all right. Um, there were a couple of songs that I really liked. One of them was um, from one of the trailers. It's, it's one of my most favorite trailers of anything. Is, uh, is it Supermoon? Uh, yeah, that was one, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's an awesome song. You know, you know the trailer where uh, it starts off in the space station, he flies down to the um, the, the snow planet, to the, the mm. trading post, and looks around, and then shoots off into space and goes to a random planet. And yeah, oh, I just, I, yeah, love that, love that song. Well, I don't think I've heard it in the game so far. Um, yeah, um, and the rest of the songs, like there's one other which it was uh, I quite liked, but yeah, you know, the, the other ones didn't stand out for me. But I'm not like. I can't say that I'm. I, I really like music. <laughs> mm. Right, right. You're not an audiophile kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but there are a lot of song bands anyway that I've I haven't liked at first, like Black Seeds. You know, first time I heard them, I was just like, what, what the fuck is this? But you know, now it's yeah. Once I've heard it a bit more, like I, I do start to enjoy it. So I can't really say, you, you know, that it's like. I, hate the music um yeah like, so, so like for me again like yeah. i said i think I, it's just mm. that i'm getting like audio tracks yeah. mixed together that aren't meant to go together yeah. and shit's Ooh. not loading properly which could be could very well be mm. another known problem with the pc version yeah. of it well i mean one, the one of the isn't playing i'm pretty properly. sure like i watched an interview with one of the band guys and they said you know we're recording this and they're going to procedurally generate it into like thousands of years of worth of music like, yeah. essentially so so there could be some weird bits of, i'm just yeah. in the galaxy of poor yeah. sound choice yeah. <laughs> nothing <laughs> um so yeah yeah I, I think i haven't listened to that soundtrack on spotify perhaps i will like that um but certainly what i've heard so far in the game has just not gone tonally with what i've been doing or indeed just with the music itself like it's just it sounded like odd mixtures of things that aren't meant to go together but maybe that's exactly what's happened they weren't planned to go together and it's just happened so yeah yeah it could be another pc issue because I, I haven't found anything like if i'm walking around it doesn't kick into like crazy you know intense drums or anything like that or like that, that those sort of weird tonal clashes haven't happened for me it's all been pretty on point um really but i i really like the you know even the song that comes up when you get a journey mo milestone I love I love that little piece of music that comes up there with the synth. Um, I, I just love that sort of shit. Hey? Have you guys had like random explosions around you? No. No. <laughs> it was. <laughs> this was another thing that happened to me on Mooney McMoonface. Um, <laughs> you're just wandering along and there's like an explosion, and I'm just like I look around and I'm like, what the hell was that? Like, um, and I think I caught the edge of one, like it was off the side of my screen. Yeah. And so I sort of saw like a, a bang, and I was just like. What you know? What the hell is that? Is that like, did like a ship crash or something? Like, yeah. So, but I went over there and it's just, there's nothing. So I was like, <laughs> it reminds me of GTA when planes just drop out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys, if you're ever you know exploring the galaxy and we want to try and track down each other's things, um, if you find any galaxies where the galaxy name and all the planets within it are all named David Cage, I've been there. Because <laughs> that's much every single planet I discover is called David Cage, Do and you know, every single galaxy is David Cage. Nice. So, nice. so I'm it's ruining, gonna be the, I'm the ruining David Cage. Jokes. Yeah, it's going to be, he's finally going to have what he's always wanted, you know, his yeah. name just known. Yeah. Written in the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Written in the stars, yeah. That'd be pretty good. Cool. That is brilliant. Like, like, I mean, we... Which is the Jumanji galaxy. Yeah. For that. <laughs> <laughs> Ode to Robin Williams. Um, we better move on from No Man's Sky because we've probably talked about that a lot now. Yep. Um, we'll just, I'll just quickly touch on the other stuff I've been playing this week, um, which hasn't been a huge amount, but there's a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, I recently picked up my 3DS again, which I haven't touched for many, many, many months, um, probably since I stopped playing um, Fire Emblem, um, which was quite a long time ago now. Awesome. And I picked up my 3DS and I went onto the eShop, which I've never really explored before, um, and ended up picking up a game on the virtual console, which was Donkey Kong Country 2, which is <laughs> one of my all-time favorite games of, you know, ever. Um, 
it was $13.60, a very odd price, uh, <laughs> but well worth it for that sort of thing. And DK Country 3 is on there as well, and I'll get that once I finish this one. But oh, I'm just like having an... It's literally the uh, you know exchange rate. Like for a, yeah, such yeah. an obscure price as thirteen sixty, that feels like a mm. non-set New Zealand price. It's just literally that's what the you know Japanese yeah. or whatever price equates to in New Zealand dollars. Yeah, yeah. right. So it's yen to New Zealand dollar. Yeah, I, I would say that that price yeah. almost feels like a good thing. Like there's no you know padding on that pricing. Mm. That's literally a direct exchange. From yeah, yeah. Yen, a, a lot of, of their games are priced like that, and then. Yeah. I think they do, you know, do different graphics when they have sales, you know, oh, games. Yeah, yeah. So, so you get like games under six dollars. It's like six dollars. Well, it's a weird amount, but like, yeah, like, <laughs> cool. Yep, yep. I had a look under the games under six dollars, and there was just some really odd games that I've never heard of. One called like Broken Egg or something, and I was just like, I'm not buying this. <laughs> I'm not blind buying Broken Egg. Yeah, there are a lot of the like. It, it's pretty cool. It would be good. I think um, what I want to see at the moment is more Game Boy Advance games. That would be awesome. Ooh. Basically, I mean, just Castlevania. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to get those on the, the thing. Um, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see Legacy of Goku on there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the original one. Like that stupid <laughs> yeah. ass fucking RPG where you powered up your moves by using them repeatedly. Yeah. I, I was trying to like live up all the characters in that game, um, but you get to a point where you've got um, his name Hercule. Yeah. Yeah. And he. He's the weakest character, <laughs> but he's also quite. I, all I remember is like, you do his like special attack or whatever, and he just does like the peace sign, and then it stuns every, all the monsters on the screen. Yeah. So you can like just pummel pummel them, and you're just doing like one damage at a time, and then then when they start moving again, you just do the peace sign peace. again, you just keep pummeling them. <laughs> so, I, so. I remember doing that in Legacy of Goku. Some of the boss fights, like when you fight the androids and things like that the only way I could find to beat these guys was to literally just keep punching them and like not let them get a hit in at all because they'll just kick the absolute shit out of you. <laughs> I would so always... You've just got to keep hitting them and hitting them. I would always cheese them from off screen. So I <laughs> like fly really quickly so that they were just off the edge of the screen, charge up a Kamehameha, and then just as they got onto the very edge of the screen, release it because they'd be you know, held in place while it was hitting them. And then quickly yeah. fly off again so they were off screen, <laughs> start charging it. And I'd just keep doing that on repeat until they die. I'd, I'd love to see someone finish that game like properly. Like How do, how do you yeah. even beat these, these characters without just glitching the game or exploiting the game? It's ridiculous. But it was a lot of fun, and I liked it. It was a lot. long time ago that I played that game, but I basically only remember like yeah. the Hercule thing, <laughs> just like <laughs> <laughs> just pummeling characters for ages. So I, I never got up to the max level because it just it was going to take too long. But, <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was I'm enjoying the the eShop. Like, there's Super Mario World, which I'll probably pick up on there. Um, I'm kind of gutted they don't have Super Mario All Stars, which I used to have on Super Nintendo, which had Mario Bros. One, Two, Three, Super Mario World. Um, had another one on there as well. What's the one with the 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 squirrel tail and all the powers and things like that? Oh, Which one was that? I can't really say. If, I think I played Mario game Mario games like twice in my life. So. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. There's one on N64 like, and one on a like Game Boy. Mario 64. Yeah, probably Mario 64. Probably, yes. yeah, that was. You'd fly around, I think so. I don't remember that, but yeah, no, it's it's really good. I'm loving DK Country too. Like I'm just enjoying the 3DS, having the 3DS, like just being able to fold it down and it just goes into sleep mode and you just fold it back up and it's right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. holy shit, this is more even more instantaneous than Resume on the PS4, yeah. which like I couldn't, I didn't think you could get more instantaneous than that. Mm -hmm. But oh, 3DS is it's a beauty, and even if you quit the game, I found like close the game completely. You open it back up and it's just exactly where you were. It just saves instances. It's, oh, it's yeah, bizarre. Yeah. Like the virtual console does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, um, I haven't gotten too much into the virtual console. I've got a couple of Zelda games, but um, need to start playing them. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, sounds awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's implemented really well, and I think I'll pick up pick up DK Country Three and and Super Mario World. I would assume they're all about thirteen to fifteen dollars kind of thing. So. Um, I think that's pretty fair, and hopefully if, if NX does something like this, I'll be able to play them on my big screen at some point, which would be absolutely awesome. <laughs> um, but the last thing I've been playing, which I actually knocked up a review for, was Soma. Um, so this is uh, Frictional Games, who did Amnesia the Dark Descent. And Penelope and, Black Plague. 
And Penumbra, that is, yeah, that is correct. Um, and Amnesia Machine for Pigs? They published <laughs> that. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't develop it. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't them. That wasn't their fault. Was it? Was it? <laughs> okay, I, I just assumed it was. No, they, they published it, um, but some, I can't remember who, who, who developed it actually, um, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't do too well. <laughs> um, but I absolutely adored Amnesia of the Dark Descent. I think a lot of people did. Yeah. Um, did you Did you actually finish it? I, I'm not sure if I've asked you before. Yeah, yeah, I finished yeah. it. Um, I, I played it uh, back when I was at high school, I think I must have played, or maybe like first or second year of uni. Oh. Um, and my parents had a beast of a computer because I got them, got them one before we, before I went off to uni. Um, because I was still at high school and I wanted to play all the best games and, and our computer had just shit the bed. So I was like, oh, we need this and we need, you know, a, a, a 9800 um, GT <laughs> Nvidia graphics card and stuff like that. Um, so I was going home in the holidays and playing playing games on their on their desktop. And Amnesia was one that I played through and just smashed it out in probably two nights or something like that. Oh, wow. I just adore it, eh? Like, it's absolutely terrifying that <laughs> game. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so much fun. Um but yeah, Soma is is their their follow up. I think it's been, God, how long? When was Amnesia Dark Descent released? Maybe two thousand and seven, ten. Really? Yeah, yeah a while ago. Yeah, not a Maybe two thousand. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, it's been at least five years, I think. Um, and Soma popped up on 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 sale. I got it for fourteen dollars or something like that. Um, and just what what a game this is. This is phenomenal. It's better than Amnesia for me, mm. in every way. Um, they've honed that sort of underlying dread that they build in Amnesia where you just, you know, catch glimpses of the monsters and you really don't want to see them because they're just, the idea of them is just too horrific. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's sort yeah. of underwater. Um, it's got Bioshocky kind of vibes in there as well. And just amazing story. Like one of the best video game stories I've played in a very, very long time. Um, there was some sort of, pretty bad technical issues that hampered it quite considerably on the PlayStation 4 version. Um, so when you get to a checkpoint, it'll freeze for a good three, four seconds um, while it loads the next area kind of thing. And it kind of takes you out of it when you're just, every now and then you just go, Oop! and you just have to wait. Sounds um, like um, Half-Life 2. Yeah, similar. Similar to Half-Life 2. Pro- worse than that, though. You you, oh, you right. hang for yeah, you hang for quite a while. Um, and there's also I encounter some hard crashes uh, during it. Or actually, I don't know if it counts as a hard crash because it just froze. It just froze completely. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, but yeah, I I had to reset it like fully kind of thing. Mm. Um, so that was disappointing. But mm. other than that, far out. That what a game that is. Like it's just awesome exploration survival horror game. Um, under C where you're just sort of going through people's positions and figuring out what the hell who you are, what the hell happens um, you know, it's, it's really good Balthazar, you played it as well man I have, yeah, how much did you uh, did you pick it up for? because I know that was one that was on your list you know, watching on that PS4 site thing that tells you yeah, yeah. on sale so I got it for $14.95 nice so yeah, I also played Soma this past fortnight um, mm-hmm. I gave it a pretty cracking review even before he finished it he was saying it was amazing and i also enjoyed amnesia so it's like fair enough i'll pick it up as well um unfortunately that sale had ended um on ps4 so i wasn't going to get it on ps4 because it's back up to some ungodly price like 39.99 or something right Um, so i was like no i'm not going to get that so i took off to steam um still a bit pricey there i think it was 25 um but it was only 15 on gog um so i was like awesome that's great now my problem is going to be simply that I don't want this to be a sit in my desk, you know, sit at my mm. desk in the study in a small room. Like I want this, I want the same experience Abe's had. I want to sit mm. in the lounge on the couch and play this mm. on the TV. So I thought, you know, I've been putting this off for a while. Um, I've been really wanting to get a controller for my PC for quite a while um, so that I can games that, you know, can be played just as well on controllers with keyboard and mouse that don't really require precision or anything. I can just sit on the couch. I've got a 10 meter HD cable so I can just stretch my T, uh, sorry, the PC to the TV um, and yeah, just just play it on my 4K TV. So I went out uh, and I grabbed a controller. Um, I got the, uh, now it's funny because we, we shit talk this company a lot um, and their hardware is not great, but actually some of their hardware is really good. Um, and I actually picked up the Xbox One Pro mm. controller. 
Oh, um, nice. Right. So this is their like competitive tournament controller where you can open it up and go inside and adjust the sensitivity of all the buttons and everything, like how hard or soft you press them to have them <laughs> react. Um, you can add, alter kind of how far you have to depress the triggers before they count as being pushed in and stuff like that. <laughs> so if you, you know, if you play competitive FPS on an Xbox or whatever, you can, you know, make it so you barely tap the trigger to shoot and, you know, get your semi-autos off really quickly and stuff like that. Um, but I was like, you know what? My, my keyboard and mouse, expensive. My PC, expensive. My monitor, like, I go yeah. all out on my yeah. PC. So if I'm going to get a controller, I'm going to get the best controller on the market. And I was looking online, and this, this was pretty much the best controller on the market. So I picked it up, uh, set me back uh, <laughs> $200, New Zealand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so already we're looking at Soma having cost me $215, 15 for the GOG <laughs> version, 200 for the controller. Um, but I then also, this wasn't a surprise to me, I did know that the controller to use on a PC, it was wireless for Xbox, but for PC it was cable unless you got the Windows 10 uh, mm. wireless adapter, which was another 20 bucks. So $235 for Soma. <laughs> <laughs> for that yeah. i got a flawless experience there were no screen freezes on load load uh, you know checkpoints or anything like that uh, it was perfect yep. the whole way through there were no hard crashes it was solid above 60 fps it looked gorgeous um and it was on my tv so it was really nice and while that was a lot of money to spend at the same time if i look at future savings mm. like for example deus ex comes out next month or sorry the end of this month I was going to probably end up having to grab that on PS4 because I wanted to play it on my TV. Now I can grab it on my PC for half the cost. It's 60 instead awesome. of NZ 120 kind of thing. So it's like already that's $60 saved. Mm. Knock that off the 200 yeah. that's 140 So it's going to save me money in the mm. long run. Really. I, I definitely recommend getting a controller for PC gaming yeah. as well because um, I, I don't think you have one, do you, Ab? No, I don't, no. Yeah, yeah I, I got an Xbox controller, just a standard you know, USB one. The not um, ultra expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like for, it was, I got it like five years ago. Well, mine's completely it's, metal. So. Yeah, but yeah, it's the, it's the best thing I've got for you know PC gaming because. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. Like, yeah. A lot of people be like, "That's blasphemy." If you play PC, yeah. use mouse and keyboard. And I agree. If you're playing, you know, a shooter yeah, exactly. or something that you exactly. need precision. Mm. But if you're playing, you know, like a hack and slash or an RPG yeah. or something that you really don't need all the keys on the keyboard then, or the precision of a mouse, then you yeah. just want to sit on the couch mm. with a controller. Mm. And then you know um, you can just sit back. Yeah, exactly. You can just sit back and. A bit further away, you don't have to like be leaned over a desk um, to do everything. So yeah. So yeah, that also allowed me to get No Man's Sky on PC rather than PS4. And you know, you Abe, you said you got it for ninety. What did you get it for, Mike? Uh, I think it was ninety as well. Yeah. Ninety. Yeah. yeah I got it for uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight dollars. Yeah. Whoa. So you know, that's... <laughs> so you know, what, what did you did you get it on GOG for twenty-eight? Uh, no, so I didn't get that from GOG. I actually got a bulk purchase code. I went in with a bunch of people who were buying it on Steam. Um, oh, yeah. And it was like buy eight keys, and that was the price each one came out to. Um, so, ah. so, yeah, I got that nice and cheap. Um, and, yeah, so a lot I can just see basically I had to, you know, shell out this time quite a bit of cash, but in the future I'm going to be saving a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty great. Uh, so, yeah, and that just when it comes to Soma, I just agree with Dave. Fantastic game. Yeah. Storytelling was great. I the did, atmosphere. I did pick it up in the sale, um, but I haven't played it yet because mm -hmm. it's sort of for me it's grouped with those horror games. So like I still, I never actually finished Amnesia, so it kind of makes me want to finish. It. And <laughs> it's it's just, not as intense as Amnesia if that makes you, you know, <laughs> want to play it more. It's not as intense. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not as scary, but it's better on ev on a, on a every other level. Like yeah. it's well, just I mean, better I, game. I could probably you know just play it by itself, but um, like I'm. The kind of person who's like you know um i can't jump into number two of the series even though it's a, a different even story it's totally but not like, linked to play, <laughs> play the dark descent um i kind of feel like you should should play um alien isolation as well um yeah yeah I, i'll be getting back into that soon i know um but yeah yeah uh, yeah sounds awesome I'll, I'll be definitely playing it highly highly recommend go uh, overcastgamer.com forward slash soma hyphen review <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's pretty much all I've been playing. I think. Um, do you want to talk about Soma at all, Balthazar? Anymore? Uh, no, or? I mean, you pretty much covered it. I, mm. yeah, yeah, I, I pretty much the same opinions as you. I mean, I told you I wasn't. I, we had slightly different feelings on the ending of it. 
Um, yeah, we'll, I, we'll have to we'll have a chat about that when Mike's played it. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so we'll put the pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess I'll kick into what I've been playing other than Soma. Um, I mean, because mm-hmm. I got this controller, I've just been playing a lot of games um, that previously I wasn't playing because they were all on my PC and I just they were you know they were couch mm-hmm. games. They weren't mm-hmm. intensive PC games. Um, right. So uh, similar to Soma, I went on a bit of a kick. Uh, in fact, frictional kick, which is why when you know you were mentioning what they made before I brought up Penumbra, because I've been playing Penumbra, uh, the Black Plague. Oh, nice. Um, that's a it's an alright game. It's a lot more puzzle heavy than Soma. Um, so for ah. example, even when it comes down to the first room you're in, I'll, I'll, I'll describe the puzzle because it's not really a spoiler. Because it's as soon as you start the game, mm. it's the first thing you see is you're locked in a cell and you have to try and find the way out. Um, and it's got a lot of that old school point and click style combining items in your inventory to make new items. Um, oh, yes. So I was like looking around, there was nothing in there. And I was like, okay, the key, the door's locked. Uh, I moved a bookcase out the way and found a vent, but the vent shaft was screwed on. There were no, you know, screwdrivers or anything. I found a coin. I was like, all right, let's combine the coin with the shaft and maybe I can unscrew it. And it was like, this coin is too fat. So then I went up to a corner and there was an old manual, uh, you know, vice press thing on uh, up there so i put the coin in that and turned it and you had to actually kind of hold on with the trigger hold on to the handle and rotate the thumbstick turn around and i you know squeezed the coin one side of the coin so it was thinner Mm. and i took it back out and then it was like yes and i used that and i unscrewed the screws on the vent shaft and pulled the cover off that and crawled through and it's very much more puzzle solving and thinking than than soma or amnesia Mm. were um, that sounds great. Which, mm. yeah, was really fun. Is I've been playing it on the couch with Hannah, who I'm going to be honest, solves most of the puzzles. <laughs> sitting there just, just frustrated, like, what the fuck is this? This is so stupid. There was one where we then had to use the coin that we pressed to buy a can of soda from the vending machine to pour all over an automatic thermostat management console so that it shorted out and, like, turned the temperature way up or something. I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is I'm sitting there just trying to combine shit with other shit to see if something <laughs> happens and she's just like oh just do this and i'm like oh, what, what? <laughs> um but does it, does it fall into the trap of of that sort of inventory combining stuff um where it, you know when you finally get the combination you're like what that that doesn't make any sense whatsoever so, like broken so, age <laughs> or so it... far no it's actually all been perfectly logical like one that i was proud of so i did solve myself was when i tried to use a syringe and he was like oh this thing's far too dirty i'm not gonna I'm going to go sticking this into myself. Um, and I also just had a bottle of alcohol in my inventory. So I just combined those. And it was like, yep, I sterilized the syringe and the alcohol kind of thing. And just simple things like they all make sense. It's like yeah. it's what you would logically think to it's, do. It's, just sometimes you don't make that. You know, you don't think that. But when you do, right. that, you never feel like, well, that's fucking stupid. It's yeah. always like, oh, of course, that's, it's, it's that's not obviously like, what you would do in that yeah. situation. It's not like the old Resident Evil ones where it's like, you need to find two gems to put in the statue's eyes to open the door, or you, no. you need the, <laughs> not you, yet. I mean, got a square it for a few hours. But... You've got a, a winch with a square um, <laughs> attachment, and, but you need a hex converter for your square winch um, so you can open the, <laughs> the shutter. Uh, yeah. No, nothing no, like that. No, no, it's no, all no, been it's logical. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that I've been playing that. Uh, I fin- I played right through in one sitting an absolutely terrible game called The Park. Um, this is also a horror game, like a uh, walking around and shit happens around you, and you. Oh, it was so bad though, so bad. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'm not going to go into that one. Um, I've been playing EDF 4.1 Shadows of New Despair. Abe, have you figured out what this game is yet? I have not at all. <laughs> I mean, my Earth, last guess was something akin to Advance Wars. Earth Defense Force is that what it's? It is. Do I don't you know, know what this game is, Mike. No, no. I, um, I just looked at EDF and Earth yeah. Defense Force jumped on my head. So, so Earth Defense Force 4.1 Shadows and New Despair is um, a third-person shooter. It is a you're a, you're a kind of ranger, or you can pick your class. Oh. I'm playing the ranger. Maybe I have seen this game. And you have to defend Earth from an invasion of giant insects. Uh, so kind of massive ants, mm. massive spiders. Um, crawling over skyscrapers, spinning webs between skyscrapers and your flying units fly into them and get stuck. And then they're stuck in there screaming, help me! And you've got to shoot them out. Um, but it's utterly ridiculous. It's almost like if Dynasty Warriors had guns it's, instead of just soldiers. And giant, I, guns yeah. and giant ants. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, okay, yeah, I definitely saw this on YouTube, I think. Yeah. Um, is it is it quite Japanese? Oh, it's very Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, from, it's made in Japan, is it? it I, I would assume yeah. so. The voice acting <laughs> is also incredible like every single character is the same person 
just pitch shifted up or down. <laughs> um, so awesome. when people get into a chant, like you have a, a wheel of, of selections you can make for something to say, because it has an online component as well. Mm. Um, my favorite is if you just select EDF and your guy goes EDF and in the same voice in slightly different pitches, it's like EDF, EDF. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's so good. Um, and then as you go on through the story, like, you know, more shit comes. So there's like giant robots and spaceships and all these things. And, oh, it's mental and so fun. <laughs> um, How did you get put onto this, Balthazar? Uh, so this was actually one that I heard discussion of in another, in a podcast I listened to. Um, it's a guilty pr uh, pleasure game of one uh, Total Biscuit. Oh, yes. Um, he mm. talked about it and about how pretty much, because I played a past one. I didn't realize I had until I played this one, but I played a past one and only played it for about five minutes and then stopped because it just had abysmal performance. Um, and one of the things he brought up about this was he was super excited because <clears throat> he's always loved the games, but they've always been shitty ports from Xbox. Mm. Whereas 4.1 is the first one that was actually made for PC and it's only on PC, I believe. Mm. Um, so it actually runs properly. Like, it runs really well. There's no frame drops or anything. Um, so I decided to give that one a go but, as well, and that was... Uh, from what I remember, fun, yeah. and I barely remember it all, but the graphics still looked a bit dated, didn't it? Yeah, so it's all it's very sort of... I don't know, it's hard to describe. Like, it's not it's, like it's the graphics are a, bad. Yeah. Like, when you look at it, it looks... Everything looks like what it's meant to look mm. like, and even the people, like, they yeah. look like people... It looks mm. good. It's just very... Yeah, I think it's because of the art style they've used that it can look good even though it's very basic. Right. It probably looks like an early era PS3 game in yeah. terms of graphical mm. fidelity. Mm. Um, but because of the style they've chosen for it and everything, very colourful and kind of mm. Japan animation sort of thing, <laughs> it, it looks it still looks good um, with those graphics. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I'm having a look at it at the moment. It's kind of cel-shaded-ish. Yeah, yeah, so definitely that palette. It has the palette of a cel-shaded game. Um, mm. So, yeah, mostly I have just been playing around with games that always intrigued me, but I didn't want to sit in my office and play them. Like, I wanted to just sit on the couch. Um, so now that I have that control, I've just been jamming those a lot. But I did pick up a PS4 game, uh, which is funny because I looked first, and this, this is kind of what my PS4 has become now. If, for some strange reason, the PSN store has a game on sale for cheaper than it is on Steam. Um, I'll <laughs> grab it there. And this was the uh, situation with Darksiders 2, the definitive edition, that pun. Um, and, yeah, I've been wanting to pick up this game for a while, but never for kind of the $60 that it released at, because I already have it on PS3. But, yeah, it's great fun just playing through that again. Um, it's literally just a 60 FPS remake with lower... Um, lower load times than the PS3 version. Uh, there was an issue at first, which actually I'm wondering if you might have uh, tried. I, I doubt you didn't, but you probably should have with Soma. Is uh, when I first started playing it, a couple of hours in, it started hard, kind of hard crashing. I'd have to right. start, I'd have to quit out of the game and reload it, and it would do that once every sort of 45 minutes. And I was like, this is a fucking pain. What's this doing? So I deleted the whole thing and reinstalled it. And then it's worked flawlessly since I reinstalled it. It hasn't hard crashed yeah. a single time or, or had any issues. So I'm wondering if that might have solved your thing with Soma as well, I, but you finished it now. So um, Yeah, yeah. I, w I would like to look into that. I, I've noticed that other people have had similar issues. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, when I looked online, it. some people had that issue with Darksiders 2 as well um, on PS4. And uh, for me, I, I put it down to the fact that when I was downloading it, I stopped it part way through and, and did a whole mm. load of other stuff and then kind of over 24 hours later resumed the download mm. so i thought maybe oh, okay. something during that process it either forgot a file or a file became corrupted so i was like i'm just going to delete it re-download the whole thing all in one go reinstall it i did that and it worked fine so um yeah it's 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 great fun if anyone hasn't tried those games i thoroughly recommend them um i believe they're remaking the first game for ps4 as well um putting that up soon and they're just amazing games they're kind of like God of War meets Zelda. <laughs> that's, that's really it. It's kind of got the open world exploration and dungeon design of Zelda games with the combat of, of God of War um, and kind of very comic booky storyline. Um, has, it, has it got sort of the puzzly elements from Zelda as well? Yeah, yeah, very much so. So it's almost always, you know, every new dungeon you go into, you'll get an item at some point during that dungeon. So that dungeon will be themed around using that item to solve a bunch of puzzles and progress. Um, and then you'll have kind of in-between mini dungeons, which will rely on using everything you've obtained up to that point to get out. Um, yeah, no, it's it's just good. It's just a good game. Cool. 
I'll have awesome. to check it out because I've never, never played any of those games. Mm. Yeah. Mike, what have you been playing, man? Uh, well, yeah, I played Inside. Uh, you convinced me last time to grab it. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, definitely loved it. Um, I think we'll, we'll have to have a spoiler cast um, soon, definitely. Um, but yeah, it's just um awesome, awesome game. Like, I, I think it's a study in what a good game should be like. It's it's really... yeah. It's really easy. It's got basic controls. You know, you you move move around using the directional buttons. You can jump and then you can grab stuff, and that's the extent of what you can do. Yeah. But with that, you know, they've built these really awesome, really awesome world, really awesome puzzles, um, and just heaps of. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but yeah, I, I played it through twice, and um, the second time, I was just noticing really minor details that um, like added quite a bit for me. Um, yeah, did, did you notice anything like that, Abe? Um, I mean, I noticed really interesting pieces of game design. Um, yep. You know, how it all foreshadows something for you earlier on. Yeah. Uh, and then that, that, that's sort of a way in which it teaches you a mechanic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, well, what I mean is, um, I think at the start, you know, you're running, you come across the, the cornfield. Yeah. And um, there's like a, a gate. Um, and so the first time it happened, I, I did it, I yeah, ran up to the gate. I was expecting to like, um, you know him to like climb over it, but he just climbed through it. Yeah. Um, the second time, I was like, I'll jump over it this time. Um, so I did a jump, and he his feet touched the top of the um, the gate, and he jumped off, and the gate swung open. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, like that. And then um, playing around with there's a, there's a submarine in the game, um, and, and in the end you come across a, a beach, and you got to like you keep keep going up the beach. Um, but yeah, you can um, just absolutely ground the um, the submarine like right in the sand. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I remember that part. I left it like quite out in the ocean and just like swam to shore. Yeah, yeah, no, because um, yeah, you can definitely sort of boost the <laughs> um, boost the submarine like right onto the beach, and it just I was expecting to sort of like roll back a bit because it's it's all round, um, but yeah, it just got completely entrenched in the sand, which is quite cool. That's um, awesome. And and good that this, that's the only point that it does get stuck because that's when you ditch the submarine as well. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just little things like that. Yeah, just um, absolutely love that game. I think it's um, it's just uh, you know it, it, as you mentioned it does so much with with so little, um, but it uses those mechanics in such a way that it'll it'll build puzzles around only one or two things, but they always come off feeling really clever. Or you'll get that moment like say Portal Two where you solve something and you and you feel really clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it, that's what I love about about Play Dead. Um, yeah, yeah. Game, so. Does it have any of those points where you solve something and then you feel like you cheated the game because you get through it and you're because that was most of my Portal 2 experience. I do it. No, no, no. I it, it never had meant to solve it that way. I think I just kind of got yeah. my, my way through that. I, think, one. I mean, it's. Um, I think it's done in a way that, um, like, basically, you're put in a situation. Um, there's one very specific order that you have to do things in, mm. but it's sort of finding out, like it's it's not it, it kind of comes about quite naturally. Like um, there's there's one that I can think of where you're on a platform over water, and if you go in the water, the thing will chase you and kill you, right. and it can swim like tr twice as fast as you. Yeah, um, and you've got to um, swim into the next room. Um, so there's like a, a button you got to push that opens a door, um, and you got to swim into the next room and go quite far. And so it's, and you've got the 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 situation, and there's no way that you can actually like open the door and swim into the next room, before and then get you. out of the water before it gets you. And yeah. so you've got to like use what you know about the the, the thing that's chasing you, um, and the door, to sort sort of put put together a like um, a couple of actions that mm -hmm. will um, get you out of the situation. It's hard to explain, but. Um, yeah. Like once, it's, once, it's interesting uh, you bring up that exact moment because that that was one of the only times in the game there was probably only two I think where I got stuck for about five minutes or something like that. Yeah, yeah. A and then once it's, everything clicked, it was just it was like this like, beautiful. This is how we do it. And like the first time, the first time I was like, I got so close and I was just like, um, go to do this, and then I'm, uh, you know, press the button to open the door and, and go in the next room, and then like, oh, and then I turned back, and then I was like. Oh shit! I shouldn't have turned back. Like, <clears throat> um, if I keep going, that's how you finish it. I'm like, oh, it's so easy. Um, so yeah, you kind of get those moments where it clicks, and you just. Um, I think the other moment you're, you're talking about is in the, with the um, 
the, the place with all the explosions. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, the, yeah, the sort was, of blast area. Yeah, that was um, an amazing bit. Yeah, awesome sound design as well. Um, the, the sound design is like nothing else. Eh? It's, yeah. it's insane. There's just some absolutely haunting moments in that mm. game um, in terms of sound. But, I mean, uh, another thing about the puzzles is they always... They're, they're so well made that you escape by like the skin of your teeth yeah, every single that, time. Yeah. You're, you'll you'll just get through a door or you'll just it's, get over a fence and it just makes you feel like just uh, uh, you know it's exhilarating. Yeah, it, gets, it gets pretty tense at times, eh? <laughs> yeah, it really does. Yeah. Yeah. There, you amazing. know, the, it, it, you have to play this game wearing a good pair of headphones. There's no other way you can play this game. Mm -hmm. It's it's just. Um, it, it, you owe it to yourself to play I, it. Like, I played it both times in one sitting. I just went through the whole thing um, without stopping. Yeah. yeah. How long was it? Um, you could probably do it's it in two or, two or three hours, I think. Yeah, I, I think it took me I, about three and a half hours. Mm. Mm. I think um, I, I kind of like remembered the feel of... Um, um, what's, what's the... the Limbo? Limbo, yeah. Um, yeah. And so like there were quite a few puzzles where I like I figured it out straight away. Um, yeah. It was like... Weird, weird that this bit's here. So what if I go into the puzzle? You know, you got to mm. press press the button to like start whatever happens in the room or whatever. And um, you know, I've already solved it. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I've, I've started it the right way. But um, yeah. No, so I did smash through a few parts, but then there are a couple of parts where it's. But it, yeah, and then you just um, you got to figure out what yeah what to do. It's um, it's it's really well done. Um, it, it also has like a wonderful sense of humor as well. Yeah. Just the the, the most the the darkest sense of humor you ever yeah. find in any medium but yeah uh, there's yeah. just a bit in particular i'm thinking with to do with the corpse and you sort of have yeah. to move a corpse yeah and it, yeah. like when when i realized that you what you had to do i just started laughing because i was like yeah. man that's messed up yeah yeah um <laughs> it's yeah. so wonderful yeah the, the past that reminded me of um it reminded me of a few games games actually yeah um portal like you said like it um it kind of gave me that feel of portal uh close to the end um Another one was Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus. Yes, yeah, very much so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's because there's a couple of moments um, where yeah, just you like if if you play through it you're, and you, you know those games, then you'll be like, yeah, this is this feels like. Um, just get to the end of a room and start chanting for the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it, that probably wouldn't almost feel out of place in this game. It's it's, <laughs> it's, it's really bizarre. Um, I think there was another game. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, like just just the whole like there's no talking at all in the game, mm. um, and um, I think as I was saying before with the, the like sort of indirect way of telling a story, like there is a story in the game they never tell you it, but you it's see it you see it happening all around you. Yeah, um, yeah. And so what what it does then is you know your your mind fills in the gaps, which um which that I quite like. So you can sort of. Soma did as well. I mean, there yeah. was talking, mm. but the talking was just about kind of your yeah. objective, where you were going. Never, yeah. The talking was never yeah. about the backstory and everything. Yeah, so I mean, you of... can pick up on all these bits and you can see what's happening around you. Mm. Um, and from that, you can sort of piece together like theories about what, what happens. I think, you know, the, the Souls games are like that as well, where, um, you know, you can go through, you don't you don't have to read so the items. Just read fucking item description. Yeah, reading item descriptions, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you, see, you see the world and like, you know, thing things like I don't know, just thinking of Bloodborne. It's just like stuff has happened before Bloodborne, and you're mm. you're following after this. Yeah, that that's what it feels like to me. And you're instead of playing an active role in the story, it's more of a, a passive. Yeah, um, it's like an observer. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's like a, a quite a famous theory in terms of science fiction. Is yeah. the best sci-fi stories come from Even, things um, not overtly being science fiction. Thing, uh, you know, a very Alien. human story happening, and mm. it just happens to be set in a science fiction world kind of thing. Yeah. It doesn't focus on the pillars of science fiction. It yeah. focuses on the characters and the narrative. Mm. I'm not sure if this is sort of the same thing, but um, with Alien, um, I think it was the original one. Um, it, it was, it, I think, from what I've uh, read about it, it, it sort of turned out unintentional for them. But um, the reason, one of the reasons that movie was so good is that they couldn't actually fully afford the um, the alien prop. Mm, um, right. So instead of showing the the terrifying alien at every turn, they they more had like um, you know the characters' reactions to it and you know seeing it in the shadows and not not fully. Yeah. So yep. your mind fills in the gaps there as well. Um, so that that's actually like a 
like a, a if you study um you know I don't know this is just coming from me doing it like a, a BA <laughs> my arts degree at uni um yeah this is my gift and my curse um uh, you know it, it, your mind fills fills in the gaps and makes it more terrifying than it would be than if, if they just showed it to you outright absolutely the fear of the but, unknown is, yeah, is, exactly. is the big yeah. thing yeah um yeah awesome like amazing game <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah, other thing I'm playing. Uh, yeah, is I've just been playing, getting back into, uh, well, still playing Monster Hunter Generations. Oh, nice. Um, on the old, the old 3ds. Yeah, yeah. Um, cause I, I was kind of thinking I'll probably play it up until No Man's Sky comes out, and then you know, I'll play Monster Hunter on my downtime from No Man's Sky. But I've, I think I've actually been playing it more than No Man's Sky. Um, just because, yeah, in a couple of days before it came out, I just started getting really into it. I yeah. started playing the multiplayer. Um, which is heaps of fun. Um, just you know, get some random chumps on the on the internet to help me out. You know, uh, fight hunt down some of these monsters. But yeah, I feel it's like really we should well figure done. out how to record 3ds footage and yeah. have an overcast session so you can have four people in a party. Can't yeah, you? yeah, yeah. And we all have yeah. 3ds's, so we should yeah. totally just all get generations. And... Yeah, I, I, I definitely <laughs> recommend it because um, yeah, you can you can set up your own sort of hubs. Yeah. Um, and then you know, um, invite your friends and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, like the just the way they they've executed the, the multiplayer, like it's all co-op. Um, but yeah, you, you know you're all fighting this monster. But basically, what happens on your screen is like what happens in your game essentially. Um, oh so, yeah. You know, like instead of like on the person who's hosting or whatever, if, if you get hit um, by the monster, but like um, on your screen you manage to jump out of the way, you know, if it's like that kind so of split. You don't take, yeah, you so, wouldn't take the damage. So it's mm. so yeah, so each player's so even, experience with yeah. it is what they see yeah. rather than what the so service is. You're almost sees. like running it locally, but um because mm. another thing that happened the first time I jumped into multiplayer is um it's only happened twice of you know, quite a few games I've played has um had it disconnect. So I'm not sure what happened. Oh, yeah. It could have been from you know the host or whatever. Um but I was left by myself hunting this like giant monster. Yeah. Um, everything, yeah. So everyone else disconnected, even though I wasn't the host. I could keep hunting, which was pretty cool. So instead of like absolutely screwing over your game, um, you still have the option to go through and complete the quest. Um, although in this case, can I was, you do ad hoc connection? Like, can you do like local? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. If we were all just like, yeah. yeah, you can do internet or yeah. Um, Try doing that so we don't yeah. disconnect. And... Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so with this monster, I was left hunting it um, by myself. But the problem is with the multiplayer games, you get like, um, oh, I just jumped in, so I didn't really read what the quest was about. <laughs> um, and then uh, you get like a supply box at the start. Yeah. And so when there's four, if, if, if you're playing by yourself, you know, there's heaps of supplies. To help oh, you but with. it's a shared supply but box. Shared oh. supply box. So, you know, you only get a quarter um, yeah. if, if other people don't steal everything, um, which happens as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to split the stack. Yeah, so I'm just like, like, I'll take all stop. of the, I'm just like, <laughs> the torches. Nobody's and... leaving me any of the, the, <laughs> the, the, the rations. So I'm going to like, my stamina is going to slowly drop all the time. But um, um, so I was left like, in a like it was a volcano environment and so you need food to keep your maximum stamina up otherwise yeah. your maximum stamina will drop you also need um cold drinks to keep you cool oh, yeah, yeah. otherwise your health will slowly drop those mechanics and man and so i'm, I'm left hate. hunting this monster i'm just like <laughs> right let's let's do this like don't have enough like of anything but you can you can always like gather like yeah yeah stuff from the environment to make potions and stuff um so i started started finding it um Eventually, like, you know, ran out of um, everything I needed, but just kept going, like, using potions <laughs> to get my health, health up and that sort of thing. Finally managed to kill this monster. It's like a giant T-Rex kind of thing with, yeah. like, a sword for a tail um, and breathes fire and stuff. Pretty cool. Um, and killed the monster, and I was like, yes, killed this monster the first time. Like, big, big achievement, but actually you're supposed to uh, capture it. And not oh, kill it, <laughs> so you <laughs> fail the quest, <laughs> and you don't get any items. You get to skin it though. No, no you don't. Oh, so I was like, oh, I'm so good. But, like, um, yeah, no, it's uh, uh, yeah, still loving the the cop because you know when things go well, um, yeah, you know, you have lots. Of I'm fun. definitely keen to pick it up. I, I always love the mm. Monster Hunter games. Mm. I just suck at them solo, so yeah. I always want to play them multiplayer. Yeah. Um, but I never trust online multiplayer mm. because of the disconnect issues you talked mm. about. Really, Nintendo have never been able to fix service stability yeah. and get get good network yeah. connections. Well, I mean, even so, though that one game 
um, had back in New Oh, actually, I think that was the only time. I, I think the other yeah. time it, it disconnected, I was, it was in a hub and not in a mission. So, oh, okay. like, overall, I'm saying it's, it's really it's good, um, even with, you know, shitty New Zealand. More likely it? pick it up. Yeah. Um, and, like, with, with the way it works, like, it, it feels really responsive. Yeah. Not like, you know, Bloodborne or something, you know, where <laughs> you, you go to hit a guy and then, you know, three seconds later, there. he's not even there, you know, <laughs> like, so you've hit him on your uh, screen, but, yeah. But um, that, that comes from not being directly PvP, it's sort of yeah. co-op, so they can do it that way. No, um, that's cool. Yeah. I'll probably pick it up, yeah. Mm. You swayed me. Yeah, I didn't yeah. really need much swaying, so yeah. I always pick up Monster Hunter games, <laughs> but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there's still, there's still the problems of, you know, fighting with randoms on the internet, is they can yeah. be really stupid sometimes and steal, steal all the supplies or um, your, your post, <laughs> like... Um, the other night I posted a, like, I was like, I need to fight this monster. Um, so I posted it, I'd never fought it before. And then everybody else just left the hub. Like if you post something they don't want to fight, they'll just leave. And so I'm just like, <laughs> whoa, like what's wrong with this monster? <laughs> like, is it too hard or something? And it, really, um, it wasn't, it wasn't hard at all, but it's just like, yeah, funny things like that. And then, oh, um, another thing I've been enjoying is, um, if like the host of the hub leaves, it'll just move to the next person in the list. Oh, yeah. So sometimes I get left with like, you know, being the host of the hub, um, and once you're doing that, you can change the the settings and stuff. You can change the name. So I've just been like, oh, I need to leave now. I'm just going to change the name to like Trump fans or, <laughs> <laughs> or like stuff like. I that. thought you meant you could change the settings, like go full dick mode, like I do in Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV. If I end up being a raid lead, I'm just like, all right, loot settings set to group leader gets all loot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See if I don't anyone knows this. I don't think you get that because it, it's really fair with like sharing loot, so you know, um, you can always grab enough. Um, but yeah, no, re really cool game. Mm. Awesome, man. Might, might look into picking that one up. Yeah, um, we'll just race through a few news items because we're going quite long today. Yeah. Um, PlayStation Neo announcements September mm. 9th or 8th, I can't remember, one of those two dates. So PlayStation is having a uh, conference in New York. Uh, is New it, York is it confirmed Neo or is it just confirmed it, they're doing a conference? I don't think it's confirmed Neo, but at this point Never it couldn't enough. really be anything else. Like, what, what yeah. are they going to talk about? They don't have anything yeah. to talk about. Uh, oh, yeah, we're officially not supporting Vita anymore. Mm. Like, what, <laughs> like what, what else are they going to say? It has to be Neo, right? It has to be. Yeah. I reckon that'll also potentially bring up the other point, um, which actually ties in really well to the Neo announcement and the. Uh, jumping ship from Sony when they released the PS4.5, as I said I would, uh, which is that there are rumors, uh, rumors abound that the PlayStation Now service, which is the ability to stream PS3 and PS4 games and stuff for a monthly subscription uh, to your PS4, so you don't need to buy games. You can basically just sign up, and there's this huge library, and if you pay the monthly subscription, you can play whatever you want in the library. Um, that service is coming to PC. Do and we, it includes Sony exclusive games. Do so, we, oh, wow. We have that in New Zealand. So we do. You can't, I don't believe you can subscribe from the, your New Zealand PSN account, but if you log into just the website rather than going through your PlayStation, uh, you can purchase PlayStation Now subscription. And then if you have like an American account on your PS4, you mm -hmm. can access it that way. Right. Um, but yeah, no, rumors abound, uh, semi confirmed. Uh, just from seeing mm. kind of uh, in a, you know interfaces and stuff like that. That yeah, mm. the PlayStation Now service is coming to PC, um, which is presumably Sony's that, response to Microsoft Play Anywhere. Mm. That brings yeah, up yeah. questions for me um, surrounding controllers because they haven't really given any compatibility for PlayStation controllers with Windows. An Xbox they one. don't. They don't. <laughs> you know, obviously, yeah. Are they going to let you use an Xbox? Because I don't. They're think kind of like well, in competition with. Um, yeah, Microsoft, I mean, so. what are they going to do? What so, else can they do? Plug I mean, your, use that. What's that thing mm. they have, that app that lets you play your PS4 games on a PC if you plug in a PS4 controller? Because if they have that, it might just be like you need to run that app as well, mm. which means it can read your PS4 controller plugged yeah. in and let you use that, mm. um, which, you know, for me, still not a problem. I have a PS4 controller. Mm. But really, yeah. it's just basically Sony saying, we listen to your podcast and we know you're jumping ship. So here you go. <laughs> Keep having the benefits of exclusive Sony titles. Anyway, we support yeah. your decision. Mm. So. <laughs> interesting, yeah. That, yeah, that, that could be um, interesting to see how that pans out. It, it could it could push me over the edge to a PC, um, but I mean we do have to wait for the Neo specs to come out as well because I'm 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 interested to see what Sony because Sony's showing their hand early. 
because the Scorpio is coming out towards the end of next year. So it's going to be interesting to see what how high they set the bar. If it's anything other than, you know, like a 1080 Ti or equivalent GPU, nah, it's an underperformer already again. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would be convinced if they give a, a bigger hard drive because that, that's the one thing I want at the moment is I don't have enough space on my PS4. Yeah, me too. Mm. Yeah. Um, from I think the, the specs that were released earlier um, or, or leaked, I'm not sure what they were. Um, it was a 500 gig, which is just the same. So just get a Nyko storage expander and a four terabyte hard drive. Done. <laughs> yeah, that, gives, that, 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 that makes your PS4 like bulk up, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, so my PS4 is slightly bigger, mm. but eh. I like yeah, asymmetry. So. Mine's behind my TV <laughs> anyway, so you know, I yeah. don't see it. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. It's pretty sad. Um, the, the last thing that, that we should probably touch on, um, apart from the THQ Nordic merger, which isn't particularly interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, Upside THQ is... is four, guys. Yeah. That's what it means. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> True. It also means more Saints Rose. Yeah, so Yay. Nordic um, snapped up a lot of their IPs, um, mm. from what I read. Well, yeah, uh, I actually I... didn't really think about it until this announcement, but Nordic made the oh, definitive made, like... edition of Darksiders yeah. 2. Oh. So, or they put it out. Mm. So, well, I, yeah. I'm not sure if it's the IPs. They definitely got the back catalog, um, yeah. and now they've sort of like rebranded as THQ Nordic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I also read that they had 20 something games in development currently, and um, I think about 13 of them haven't been announced yet. So, yeah. Wow. That's I can't think of a huge amount of THQ properties that I'm particularly yeah, neither, interested neither. in. I don't think I've ever played a lot of the games, but yeah, I know that. I think they've got some wrestling games. <laughs> That'll uh, be good. <laughs> John Cena <Dutch> RPG. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, the, I mean, the last thing is Pokemon Uranium. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm not sure when it got got put out. Um, so fan made game. Um, so I only heard about it um, yesterday, actually. Um, so Balthazar managed to grab it. Did you, did you grab it, Abe? No, no, I didn't. No. Because um, I yeah I was up at um, I, yeah I couldn't sleep. I was up at like six in the morning. And I was like, oh, I should should actually grab it because it could probably actually get pulled down at any moment. So I went to the website and um, it'd been pulled down already. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think my thoughts were the same as I, yours, Mike. Like, I mean, working for somewhere that deals with IP a lot, my immediate thought was, this is an 100% yeah. like yeah. this is going to be gone. I'm grabbing yeah. this now while it's here. Well, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be, uh, it's not like I just like, you know, as a, I have to play it kind of thing. Um, I kind of wanted to grab it because I, I knew there was the possibility that it would get pulled down. Um, yeah, so there was just a post saying you yeah, were contacted by um, lawyers representing Nintendo. Um, we don't want to piss them off. Um, I mean, from Nintendo, um, it, you can kind of it kind of goes either way, really. You know, with them, they this, this is a great fan made game from all. So accounts. was it Nintendo? Did they say it was Nintendo lawyers? It was lawyers representing Nintendo. That's interesting because yeah. I mean Nintendo don't own Pokemon. The Pokemon Company. Pokemon Company. Oh, yeah, maybe it was and Pokemon And Nintendo Company. doesn't own the Pokemon Company. They just have, uh, yeah. like, they're the majority shareholder, but they don't own it. So it is. Yeah. I could probably um, pull it up. Well, that link was still there. It says download. No. Oh, oh is that a cached read... page? <laughs> no. Maybe, it, yeah, maybe there's a cache. Read our statement. Um, multiple takedown notices from lawyers representing Nintendo of America. Which is interesting because, mm. I mean, when Pokemon Go, when all that hubbub was mm. about and, it, and their stock prices went up they immediately went down again when they released a statement saying just so everyone's aware we don't actually own pokemon or have any stakes in pokemon go <laughs> whatsoever the yeah. pokemon <laughs> company owns pokemon yeah. so it's now interesting that they're like but if anything tries mm. to you know yeah. breach pokemon ip we are going to sue you yeah. even though yeah. we don't own it <laughs> yeah i mean it's really odd so i mean pokemon uranium is it's a fan-made version of pokemon that's been in the works for like a decade or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, mm. but it basically it was just bringing Pokemon to PC because mm. it's never right. existed on PC as a platform. So mm. they were just like, hey, let's just make a Pokemon RPG for yeah. PC. Well, there's been there's been ones before. Um, mm. The one I know of is uh, Fusion Gener Generation. Pokemon Fusion Generation. Oh, you should look it up. <laughs> it's, um, it looks quite mad. <laughs> so basically... Um, I think it's set in, I think it's the Johto region, um, but oh, yeah. the, the guy Bill who works Tracy for Pokemon region. PC guy, he's, he goes all crazy and he starts to like fuse Pokemon together. Oh God. Yeah. So you get all these like crazy combinations. Um, That's pretty great. I think it's like hundreds of them or something, but um, 
sounds really mad, but apparently you can like go into his basement and there's all these like, like you know, um, failed freak Pokemon oh, God. in cages. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I did start playing it ages ago. I, I did grab it, um, but yeah, I, I just didn't grab me straight away. It's but sad there, there was Iranians a, down. Yeah, yeah, I mean they yeah. said it was like in the work for so, ten years, yeah. and for that to just be yeah. pulled. But I mean, I mean they it, got it, what one and a half million downloads. downloads yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. I mean it, it's a shame that they're not supporting you know this family again. But at, at the same time, you know they do have the right to protect their their rights. Their rights. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Um, yeah, but mm, cool. Um, anything else? Yeah, Final Fantasy. The, the only other thing is the old Final Fantasy 15 has been delayed. Delayed. Uh, not November. surprised. I was surprised when they announced it as coming out as soon as September. Mm. I was like, nah, no way. After the demos we've played, this is not almost ready to come out. <laughs> and I, I, I agree. Abe, yeah. Abe will be at the top of the list of agreeing with that yeah. statement. Yeah. Yep, so, absolutely. I was, yeah, I was yeah. shocked when I heard it was coming out September, mm. so delays are not a surprise to mm. me whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, personally, I've, I'm not really, like, hyped for this game. Um, mm. Like, I wasn't planning, you know, I'm going to get it after I see some reviews and that sort of thing anyway. Um, so I, I'm not too too bothered with the delay. It's all, all better. Um, I was in Japan when it was coming out anyway, so I wouldn't have been able to play it. And now mm. it'll be out. I'll be back when it comes out. So mm. it's, it's fine yeah. with me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's all good. Um, another thing I've been enjoying, because yeah, I have looked at a few more, and I was uh, so which will make me think maybe more that maybe I will get it. Um, is uh, yeah, watching a few people talk about it, and it seems pretty cool. But one thing I've been enjoying is the the music. You mm -hmm. guys heard the um, yeah, um, who was that? Yeah, Florence and the Machine. Who's that? Florence. What's this one? Final Fantasy Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard that? Have you heard that song? I've I've heard of They've, that oh, that, yeah. that band. Florence. So Florence is doing music for Final Fantasy Fifteen. Um, but yeah, she's done a, a couple of songs, but one of them is um a cover of Stand by Me. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So no, I remember that. I, I'm not a fan of that song. Um, or the movie. Um, Skrillex did some. Oh really? Oh, but yeah, the movie. The movie's excellent. It's a or Dead Mouse or something. Like, like I have that. to say, it's an amazing version of the song. Like yeah, I love that. I love her version. So yeah. Mm. Are you okay. you've been looking at trailers and stuff for King's Blood at all? That interest you? The movie. The movie. Um, what I love about it is the the cast they've got. Yeah. If I can, have you seen the voice cast? So the well, king, I'm guessing... the king who is inevitably going to die. If he wasn't already going to die, he is now because he's Sean, Sean Bean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so it's like as soon as they cast him, it's like, is all right, it, so he's dead then. Is <laughs> um, Nolan North in it? No, I don't believe or, so. Um, but the uh, uh, this chick who, since we first saw her, I, I don't think she's evil. Mm -hmm. I don't think she is. But ever since first saw her, oh. like, there's something not right about her, and she's going to turn out to be fucking it's evil. It's Cersei. And it's Cersei yeah, Lannister. Yeah, um, and I was like, well, that's mean. it. Not only is she actually <laughs> evil, she's going to kill Sean Bean. Like, it's just going to happen. So I'm super wow. pumped for that movie now, just because you can close your eyes and listen to it, and it'll be like an unaired episode of Game mm -hmm. of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we're, we're, is that coming out simultaneously with the no, game? I think it's coming out first. I think it's coming oh. out sometime. I think it is still set to release in October, maybe? Thing, I think. I wonder. Do you know? Do we know if it's going to be like at the movies or straight to DVD? I think or it's, it's probably going to be straight on to YouTube. DVD. I'd imagine yeah, yeah. DVD it's... slash bundled as a Blu-ray with the yeah. collect edition mm -hmm. of the game or something oh, yeah. like that. That could be cool. You might you might have your independent cinemas screening it or something. Maybe think... like a few of them. They're yeah. doing some anime stuff, which is just available on YouTube, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's an animated series on YouTube, which mm. already I think there's three episodes out, maybe. Mm. So that's all right so far. Mm. It's got uh, the blonde kid as an obese kid in it. So he <laughs> used to be a fatty, and then he slimmed down. <laughs> that's good lore development right there. World building. Yeah. <laughs> Character development. World building from square. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's probably about all all we have uh, have time for this week. So thank you very much for for joining and uh, tuning into us again. You can find us on Facebook, Overcast Gamer, Twitter, Overcast Gamer. At Overcast Gamer on Twitter, I should say. And, and uh, OvercastGamer.com is the website. The, uh, what was the YouTube URL again? Um, now, the YouTube URL <laughs> is... is why, uh, oh, hang on, let me, let me find this. <laughs> just, 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 print, just say that. Not anyone. Just go on. <laughs> we, um, 
youtube.com forward slash channel forward slash UCGW7OBOHUNHTKDVW8162CA. Cool. And well, I know, like, I know. subscribe <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that we can uh, get custom URL. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're on 52 subs at the moment. We need 100 to get, get a custom URL. So it's not a, not a huge ask. Um, and then you won't hear me repeat that every Oop. every single time or ever again. Wait, uh, I'm pretty sure YouTube with YouTube you, capitalization is important. So yeah, there's going to there be any... some uppercase in there yeah. as well. So, you know. yeah, there is there is some uppercase. Do you all better read out the uppercase? <laughs> I think uh, just yeah, subscribe, yeah. guys. Yeah. Just subscribe just, to the yeah, channel. Yeah, just and subscribe. Just search yeah. Overcast Gamer. Will be the first result. Um, uh, yeah, we are the first result now. We've 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 gone above. Uh, Fucking that, douchebag yeah. who did some Halloween video. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Overcast Gamer. First result. So, yeah, just subscribe to us if you want. Um, we put out some uh, content, usually a weekly kind of thing. Um, we're doing Darkest Dungeon, um, run through at the moment. Uh, Balthazar and, and, and Mike are working on that, and, and Regan, when he gets back as well. Um, reviews can be found at overcastgamer.com, and we'll be doing video reviews and stuff um, to come. So, yeah, just check out anywhere you can. And thanks for tuning in. Catch you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye.